Hey guys, it is I, the Comics Kid 2099, and I am here today to do a video for you. Today I am doing a video of Missed Opportunities. If you've never seen me do one of these before, basically, I talk about something that should have been done differently. Usually it is in comic books. Today I am doing an example from the animated series Batman Beyond. This series began in 1999, and if you've never seen it, you are doing yourself a disservice, and you need to go and watch it, because it is awesome. I've seen this entire series, and there are actually a few things about this series that I would have changed, but specifically, I am going to be talking a little bit about the protagonist's love life. Terry McGinnis, who was 16 or 17, he is the main character in this show, and he is Batman. And in one episode, Season 1, Episode 8, titled Dead Man's Hand, the Royal Flush Gang comes to Gotham City. And Batman, or rather Bruce Wayne, tells Terry that the Royal Flush Gang is a legacy. They are a family of supervillains. And they, when one king dies, a new jack or whatever will take his place as the next king. And... They have been plaguing Gotham ever since Bruce was a young man, at least. And one of the young ladies in this family, this specific version of the Royal Flush Gang, her name is Tin. She is like, you know, the card Tin, because all of these people, they are playing card suites, like, you know, King, Jack, Ace, Queen, Tin. And... Tin has fallen for young Terry McGinnis, and Terry is having a little bit of girl trouble with Dana, who is his steady girlfriend throughout the series, and so she's kind of broken up with him just for this episode. And so Terry kind of sort of falls for Tin. Her name in real life is Melanie. And throughout this episode, both of them, they are unaware that the other one has a secret identity. They're trying to maintain this little relationship that's pretty much just really happen just out of nowhere and they're wanting to just go for it. Terry doesn't want to take it slow. M Melanie doesn't want to take it slow. They're just going for it. And at the end of the episode, the Royal Flush Gang gets arrested and then Terry is all like, well, this sucks, you know. Uh, yeah, it sucks. Love sucks. And then Bruce is like, let me tell you about a woman named Selena Kyle. And it's supposed to be a parallel. You've got Bruce, who the same kind of thing sort of happened to him. Although he wasn't being, you know, a 16-year-old boy about it. But he did fall in with a young woman from the wrong side of the law. And he kind of had a thing for Catwoman. And it's supposed to be paralleling these two. Now, Melanie and the Royal Flush Gang, they showed up once again in the series, and I think after that, they didn't show up again, although I might be mistaken. Uh, in Season 2, Episode 7, titled Once Burned, Melanie comes to Terry saying, I need your help. Uh, my family has been kidnapped by a gang of Jokers, Jokers being street thugs who model themselves after the Joker, and Melanie says, I need you to help me rescue them. Now, it's actually been a little while since I've seen that episode. I know I've seen Dead Man's Hand several times, and I don't think I've seen this episode nearly as many times. In this episode, of course, Terry is very skeptical. He's like, you know, you were a criminal, and I still think you are. I don't really think that you are worthy of my trust. And basically, I'm going to give you a little bit of a spoiler for this series. If you haven't seen this 14-year-old series, I am going to spoil it, so mute the video, whatever. Basically, throughout the whole series, Terry and Tin don't really get together, unfortunately. What I would have changed, I think, that these two should have gotten together for a couple of reasons. One, I never thought Dana had much of a personality. We never actually got to see Terry fight for that relationship. Dana and Terry were already together when the series began. We know next to nothing about Dana. She's just the girl. And she's really only there to cause problems for Terry. Whenever he's being Batman too much, she's there to put a monkey wrench in his life. She's there to say, listen, you can have your work or you can have me, but you can't have both. And basically, that was what she was. She was more of a plot device than an actual character. And... 
10, although she only appeared in two or three episodes, I felt like there was actually something there. We could have actually seen them build a relationship, as opposed to Terry just having it, and then the show not doing anything with it. Having said that, if Terry and Tin were going to become an item, as I think they should have been, I really would not have wanted her to remain a criminal. I think that that line, let me tell you about a woman named Selena Kyle, that was cutesy and all, but I do not think that this show would have benefited from just straight up copying Catwoman and Bruce's relationship from the original animated series. I think this show, although it never quite found its footing with a whole lot of villains, a lot of the villains that this show has, in my humble opinion, they never were quite as memorable as Bruce's rogues gallery, I do applaud this show for actually trying to do new things. And I think one thing, if this show had tried to put a relationship with Tin and Terry together, one new thing that they should have done would be to take Tin and say, okay, she's a former supervillain, and now she's trying to remodel her life. She's trying to seek redemption. And you've got all sorts of angles to play this on. You've got Terry, who actually wants to believe that she's trying to redeem herself, but there's that little seed of doubt that's been planted by Bruce, who definitely does not trust her. And you would have a whole lot of, why is she here with you? She doesn't need to be seeing the cave, or she's with you right now, isn't she? And it would have been great. We could have had not quite a Batman and Robin, but more of an equal partners kind of thing. Like if Batman and Catwoman were constantly patrolling the city together and fighting crime together. That would have been cool. And definitely, in my humble opinion, it is a missed opportunity. I think that could have really made the show kind of cool. And I honestly think if the Batman Beyond show was a thing now where cartoons definitely have moved closer to having long-form story arcs that span multiple episodes instead of just singular standalone episodes, I definitely think that this could have been a thing if the Batman Beyond television series was a thing now. Uh, I th definitely think you could have a relationship that builds over the course of a season instead of standalone episodes. Uh, I'm not dissing standalone episodes, by the way. I just think that sometimes they can be a hindrance rather than a blessing. Um, so, that is the missed opportunity that I wanted to talk about with you guys. I'm curious what you guys think. Do you agree? Do you hate Dana as much as I do? Do you like Tin as much as I do? And do you think that she should have wound up with Terry? Uh, let me know in the comments below, and I will see you guys tomorrow with another video. I will talk to you guys later. Toodles.